All right, welcome back to Digital Dream Box. Today, we're going to finish off the last props for our room. So let's jump right in. All right, let's take a look at how we can finish off our room. So we have a fairly basic room and it doesn't look like anyone actually lives here. Let's give it a couple small items to make it a little more um, realistic. So I think what I want to do is first create a light switch for the door. And before I do that, I noticed that the sofa is looking kind of small. I'm just going to um, increase the size of that a bit. Uh, it's looking a little better. I just need to bring it back. And maybe we'll bring back the um, coffee table a little bit as well. Yeah, that's better. Now let's make that light switch. So I'm adding a cube to the scene and I'm going to isolate it. And I'm going to make a, a light switch similar to the one I have. So I'm just going to raise that up. Here's our light switch and, or at least the start of it. Let's go into the uh, insert edge loop tool. I need a couple loops. So choosing the option box, changing it to multiple, and I'm going to add a couple loops here. Then I'm going to press um, the scale tool. So pressing R, bring that there. And then I also want a couple loops around the side. Again, pressing R and there we go. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little taller. And then I want to cut right in the middle too. So um, since I have the tool open, I can just go here and choose. Um, if I go into multiple loops and I set this to one, what it's going to do is when I put this down, it's going to put it right in the middle. So since I need one right in the middle, there we go. And then I want to bevel this area so that I can inset it. So I'm going to select those edges, just holding down shift and selecting all of these. And then I can bevel using the bevel button here, or I can hold down shift, hold down the right mouse button and choose bevel. Just going to reduce the fraction, but my global intensity strength is too high. So there we go. That looks pretty good. I'm exaggerating some of the forms just because it's being viewed from quite a distance, so I just want it to be readable. And I'm going to extrude this in using the Smart Extrude, so I'm pressing W, then I'm holding down Shift and extruding that in. And then finally, I just need to pull this edge out on the bottom to make it look like the light has been turned on. So Again, exaggerating the form a little bit because I want it to be readable from a distance. All right, let's exit isolation. We will drag our light switch against the wall, bring it up a little bit, and then scale it in. Okay. And I'm pressing A to frame the whole scene or all my objects. And light switch is looking a little bit large, so I'm just going to scale that in a little more. Again, I'm pressing A to frame everything. There we go. And now let's make a, oh, actually let's name our object. Going up to here, call it light switch. And I might as well delete the history while I'm here. Okay, now let's make a book. I'm going to raise this top shelf a little bit for now. And I'm going to put a cube in the scene and I'll isolate it. Now let's make the book form. So the rough dimensions of a book, because we can change those later. Something like that can work. And then I need a couple of loops here. So. Again, I can go into my Insert Edge Loop tool, or I can just use them. Um, actually, let's do that one. Insert Edge Loop tool again. Get used to this tool some more. I need two loops now. Right, so two. 
and I'll click on right here. And I'm going to scale those apart, and those will be the, the covers of the book. And then what I'll do is I'll pull this um, back, this face back here, back a little bit to give the book spine a little bit of, um, of a curve. And finally, I need another loop here, and I want it to be the same angle as this one. So what I can do is uh, go into my insert, insert Edge Loop tool and choose Equal Distance from Edge. And if I click on this side of the mesh, there we go. And then finally, I need to exit the tool because if I am still in the tool, I can't select the faces, right? So I need to press Q to go back into selection. And then I can choose face mode. Now I can choose these faces. And I want to extrude these back, extrude these back for the, the book pages. All right. Um, first, let's close this. Extrude, and then I'm going to reduce that thickness. All right, I think that works. Make it a little thicker. There we go. And let's exit isolation mode. And I want to push this against there. So for now, I'll just drag this over here, bring it up a little bit, scale it down, and push it against the shelf. Now I want to rotate it, but I want to rotate by uh, snapping values. So if I open my modeling toolkit, if I press E to rotate, you can see down here, um, we have some transform settings. If I press J, you'll see it switch to snap. And right now I have it set to 45. Normally by default, it's 15. I prefer 45, right? So if I hold down J, I can rotate this by 45 degrees. And now I rotate it 90. And let's put this on the shelf. If I scale the book though, um, the bottom of the book keeps leaving the shelf. So one way to get around that is moving the uh, transform to the bottom of the book. So I'm going to hold down D, hold down V, just going to bring this to the bottom of the book, and there we go. Now if I place the book on the shelf, if I scale scale it, it stays there. there you go. And I actually want a little bit taller too. Now the book's on our shelf, and I want to make a few copies of the book, and I can control D, drag this across, control D, drag this across, right? But there's a better way. And, and first, I want to show you something. Right now, our book's not named. It's just calling it a PQ123. First, I'm going to delete the, the duplicates. If I name my book right to book1, now when I duplicate it, control D, it calls it book2. So that's very convenient. I will move the book across now. And I can keep duplicating and moving across. But there's a faster way to do this. and if you hold, after you make a duplication and you make some changes to the transform, if you hold down shift and press D, it duplicates with the last transform you did. So now I just need to hold down shift and keep pressing D. And now I have a bunch of books. The only issue is that it looks a little bit fake, them being all the same size. When I scale out, it's not very interesting, right? So what we can do is just for a bit of variation, we'll grab some of these books and change the um, height of them. Maybe some of them are smaller. Because right now it looks like an encyclopedia set. And I don't think people have those anymore. So, And then I'm going to grab some of these books, maybe the larger ones, and just bring them out a little bit. Just pretend they're a bit bigger. This small one I'll push in. And just doing this just makes it a little more believable. And this last book, I think I'll lean it against the others. And because our pivot's at the bottom, it rotates from the bottom, so that's uh, good for us. Okay. All right, and now when we uh, zoom out, you can see the books look a little bit different, right? And finally, um, I want to put a vase maybe on this floor shelf. So let's make a vase next. For now, I'm going to close this and 
this. And let's put a cylinder in. So let's model with topology in mind. Um, first, let's isolate this. So if we smooth this, right, if I take this and I've, I were to perform a smooth to it, you can see it gets a lot of ge geometry, right? A, a, a decent amount. I'm going to undo. Um, so when we make our vase, we don't, we have to consider what's kind of like the minimum topology we need. In this scenario, there is no right or wrong answer, but um, I tested it out and I found 14 was pretty good for still giving the vase kind of round and smooth looking, but not adding a lot of uh, geometry. Even 12 was okay. All right, so here's the vase. Let's scale it up a little bit. Um, for now, I'm just going to bring the pivot point to the bottom as well, just to sim simplify the process for later when we're setting it. And then I want to put an edge in the middle where the vase body will be. So I'm using my multi-cut tool. So I'll just show you how I got there again. By now, I think you guys um, probably have it down. So I'm holding down the shift key, holding down the right mouse button, right mouse button, and choosing multi-cut. And I'm going to put a cut right here for the body. And then I'm going to go into edge mode, double click, and scale that out. And what I want to do now is just go into vertex, bring in the bottom a little more, and maybe bring it down a touch. And grab the top vertices, bring them in a little bit, and bring them up a touch as well. If I press 3 now, we can see we have the basic shape, right? So um, I want to take these top um, faces and scale them up, or sorry, extrude them up. So I can go into face mode. Hang on for a second. All right, go into face mode and hold down the tab key and just drag and that toggles the drag select. And then I can extrude this up. So I'm holding down the, um, first I'm going to the move tool, holding down the shift key and doing a smart extrude. And I don't need those top faces. I'm just gonna delete those. All right. And if I press three on the keyboard, you can see that it's smoothed out. And what I can do is, it doesn't look that bad like that, um, but what I can do is I can select these edges here and I can perform a bevel. So I'm going to open up the modeling toolkit, select bevel, and I'm going to press three in the keyboard. And now when I change the fraction, right, I can change it to look exactly the way I want. And that's the advantage of sub D modeling. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now we need to bevel the bottom as well. So I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to bevel using this method, just the marking menu. And when I press three, right, drag the fraction down. It starts snapping when it gets too low. So I'm, um, an option is to turn chamfer off to give a, a bit more of a sharper form. And let's just check this. I think something like that looks good. And then the last thing I want is just to add a cut at the top here to stop the smoothing at the top, right? So the final curve. So let's go into the multi-cut tool, add a cut around here. And now we can just take this edge and just move it up and down till we, till we get to a point that we like. So something like that is good. Yeah, so that's a bit of sub D modeling. And now we have our shape, we have a shell of it, right? I want to extrude this now. So I'm going to press um, one to go back into the regular preview mode. And I'm going to hold down shift, hold down the right mouse button, and I can get to smooth this way. Or the other option is from up here. So mesh smooth. Right. Smooth. And you can see it's at two subdivision levels. And that's a little high for me. I don't really need that many. I'm just going to change that to one. Um, hang on, I have to control Z. I forgot to extrude it, actually. So let's take our shape first. And we'll extrude to give it some thickness. It's like, what? I was wondering why it looked kind of funny. Um, and I'm going to exaggerate the thickness just a touch. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And now pressing 3 to preview it. There we go. Looks pretty good there. And now we can smooth this. So going into Mesh, Smooth, or using the marking menu, holding down Shift, 
right mouse button and smooth. I'm going to reduce the division to one. Now we have a vase. You can see that, you know, you can see the geometry um, where the angles kind of curve and bend, but at the distance we we're going to view that. So leaving isolation mode, let's um, first scale it down a little bit. I want to put it on um, this shelf here. And while I'm here, I might as well name it so I don't forget. Call it vase one. Might as well delete the history, scale it down. Gonna set it on our shelf here. I think that's pretty good right there. And then now we just need to scale it down. And it looks like um, we can make our lives easier just by moving the pivot to a point to the bottom. We can press the space bar, go into the one of the side views, so maybe the front view, isolate our object, frame in on it. And then I'm just going to move this pivot point to the bottom of the vase. And that way, when we scale it, it stays there. I think that looks pretty good for that size. Let's go out and view it at a distance. We'll turn the wireframe off for a second. Yeah, so you can see that there's plenty of geometry there for making it readable, making it look smooth, I should say. Turning back on the wireframe, and then I want to put a couple up here. The advantage of a vase is, so first I'm going to control D to make a duplicate, duplicate, and then drag this up here, put it up, up top here, and I'm going to go into the top view to make my life a little bit easier. Just quickly get it over here. And now I just need to bring it down. All right. And the advantage of the vase is what I was saying is that we can scale it down. We can bring it down like this. And then it starts looking like um, another object, so a different object. There you go. Control D and just put those there. Yeah. So now we have uh, some smaller items that um, some ornament pieces that have um, added to the room. So turn off wireframe on shaded for a second to take a look at it. Yeah, so our room looks pretty good. That should do it for that. Oh yeah, and don't forget to save, increment and save. So file, increment and save. All right, that finishes up our room. In the next part, we'll learn how to add some materials to some of the objects, and then we'll wrap up this beginner series with a quick render. After that, look for some one-off tutorials where we'll learn some lighting and rendering within Maya um, in case you want to render something nice for your own portfolio or upload to a website. And then finally after that, um, we'll focus on the game engine, so making things look nice there, so rendering within the game engine. Um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Thanks a lot guys. See you in the next one and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.